right? So we got an outline for the periodic table. So that arrangement we are given based on the simply valency electronic configuration. So modern periodic table completely based on the electronic uh, configuration. So here simply based on the differentiating electron where it is going to be enter arrangement. So based on that we are arranged the elements. So while we are arranging up to 30 elements, right up to 20 elements, there is no problem from 21 to 30 element, right? So here you are getting the difference, right? They are not falling into the same, right? Here, these are P block elements, aluminum and boron are P block elements. So they are not falling into the same group, no same valency. So that is the reason here you are separating these at right side. Isolate helium also. Every horizontal row ending with a shell. Then starting of this horizontal row by lithium with new shell, sodium, new shell, potassium, new shell, and so on. So here remaining also we are filling in the same order. Okay. Then here this is sixth horizontal row, 57 to 71. I'm not filling in this because they are belongs to F block, not D block. So why you are showing that, uh, especially in this third uh, vertical line? Because here they are having one electron in a D block. So that is the reason they are shown in this third vertical column, right? So that uh, 57 to 71, and uh, 89 to 103 elements 14, 14 are separated uh, at the bottom of periodic table to uh, what, uh, avoid the long formation of a periodic table, right? So just simply Mendeleev separated that uh, 14 and 1428 elements from 57 to 71, laryngeum to lutetium, actinium to, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, 57 lanthanum, 71 lutetium, then actinium, 89th element, next 103rd element, laryngeum. So they are separated at the bottom of a periodic table. Then here, just here I am trying to give a number for each vertical column. So here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So these are what here, modern system, Arabic numerals, we are using to indicate the vertical columns by a number. That vertical columns are here called as groups. Then what about horizontal rows? They are called as periods here. Okay, here, according to modern system, we are using Arabic numerals. Traditional system is there. So according to traditional system, According to traditional system, we are using Roman numerals. Roman numeral numbers, I followed here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, eight. Remaining, I am coming from uh, right end. So from eight to one, right end is given by eight, next seven, six, five, four, three, two and one. So here, there are two columns left. So here, cobalt to uh, mainly, uh, it is uh, meltanium, meltanarium, and nickel to dysprosium, right? So that two vertical columns, along with this eighth group, combining the three vertical columns are taken here, eighth group, right? So here, confusion. Left side eight, right side eight are there. So according to Mendeleev, we are classifying these groups into A and B subgroups. A and B subgroups. So what they are here, all the towers that are peak level, they are given as here group A elements. So 1A, 2A, next to 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A. Next. 
all these d block elements are given with the b block right b group subgroups b so third b fourth b fifth b sixth b seventh b eighth b one b and uh, two b so these are the group numbers assigned according to modern system and uh, traditional system in two ways we are uh, using right so modern modern system arabic numerals traditional system roman numerals okay here we are using different colors for the representation of uh, available elements in this periodic table so i am using this uh, pink color to represent uh, alkali metals light pink color alkali metals dark pink that is for alkali earth metals next here simply light blue color transition elements or transitional metals transition elements or transitional elements then here uh, dark yellow or orange that is here aluminum or gallium indium like that that basic metals they are what basic metals here a uh, green color that is for semi metals that is for semi metals next uh, here uh, blue somewhat dark here they are for non metals they are for non metals next uh, light yellow it is for halogen group dark uh, yellow it is for noble gases right then here this uh, lanthanum to lutetium lanthanides 57th element to 71 element they are called as lanthanides next uh, red color actinides that is from 89th element to 103rd one or three element so these are about uh, elements and their colors representation to identify them easily right so this is the information you will get so here just look at here i am removed all the elements when i remove that i got outline for the periodic table i got outline for the periodic table so here according to that simply we are giving a structure outline for the periodic table so this is modern periodic table uh, outline in this also we are able to remember something information what is that here block wise elements so here this 1a and 2a group elements are here s block elements because the electrons filled into this s block right s1 and s2 so 1a group elements ns1 electronic configuration 2a group elements ns2 configuration right for example here 1a group elements what they are here lithium is there here lithium electronic configuration is 1s2 sorry 1s2 and 2s1 so here it is this electronic configuration then next element is beryllium here its electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 so final differentiating electron is giving 2s2 configuration so that's why here sodium 3s1 next to potassium 3s2 like that so here 3s1 3s2 so similarly you can write the electronic configuration for the last element in the same group so generally what we are saying their electronic configuration is ns1 ns2 likewise here these are what these are here d block elements from 3b to 2b these are what d block elements here from 3a to 8a these are p block next here bottom 2 rows 14 14 they are here f block elements so block wise you are able to recognize that uh, elements in the periodic table so s block p block then 3b2 2b t block then bottom there belongs to third b group f block elements 14 and 14 elements right then here generally 1a group elements are here called as 
alkali metals one a group elements are called as alkali metals because here they are produced from the plant ash right they are produced from the plant ash alkali metals second a group are called as alkali earth metals second a group are called as alkali earth metals right see here one a group including hydrogen or not including hydrogen identify that so not included hydrogen is kept separately in a, this vertical column one group but not belongs to one a not belongs to category alkali metals right so this is the next uh, here general electronic configuration before going that here s and p block elements s and p block elements they togetherly called as here representative elements s and p block elements together called as representative elements here p block elements s block elements completed d block elements they are called as transitional elements they are called as transitional elements f block elements they are called as here inner transitional elements s and p block representative elements d block transitional elements f block inner transitional elements then look at here general electron sorry uh, this uh, water first horizontal row which is separated at the bottom below the periodic table they are called as here four f elements four f elements are called here simply lanthanides from lanthanum to laurentium lanthanum to laurentium then next here next here five f elements right five f elements here five f elements are called as here actinides they are from thorium to laurentium lanthanides are lanthanum to that means uh, here there is actually some contradiction is there it is given in the page number uh, 136 in your textbook there is no clarity which are called as lanthanides which are called as actinides some people are saying here lanthanides are from lanthanum to lutetium some are saying from actinium to lutetium right actinides also same here uh, actinides are from actinium to laurentium some are saying ytrypnium to uh, laurentium so there is contradiction right whatever it may be 4f block are called as sorry uh, 4f elements are called as lanthanides and uh, 5f elements are called as actinides so remember that so these 4f and 5f uh, elements are separated f block elements are separated at the bottom of the periodic uh, table there are 28 elements totally then here simply now we are observing the general electronic configuration of uh, s block elements that is from ns1 to ns2 configuration right ns1 to ns2 configuration then what about p block elements here p block elements are generally having the electronic configuration from ns2 np1 to ns2 np6 ns2 np1 to ns2 np6 next here d block elements d block elements for example here d block elements electronic configuration we are written for 21st element it is scandium so that electronic configuration i am writing here using a red color right here look at that is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d1 right so for the last element in this block zinc so that electronic configuration is 4s2 3d 10 right so here simply maximum value of n is what 4 so n equal to 4 n s2 then here d block taking n value is 3 so n minus 1 t 1 to n minus ns2 n minus 1 d10 so this is we are writing as general electronic configuration for the d block elements 
So n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns1 or ns2 right here it is greater than or equal to 4 it is greater than or equal to 4 so n value minimum 4 then only d block starts right then what about f block so similarly we are writing the f block elements configuration n minus 2 f 1 to 14 and n minus 1 d 0 or 1 so 0 to 1 only only 1 it will take right so for f block elements general electronic configuration we will notice here n minus 1 for example 4f1 electron we are writing so 4f1 will be with uh, 3d sorry it is plus 1 4d1 4d1 sorry sorry n equal to 6 we are taken minus 2 means 4 we are getting n minus 1 6 minus 1 it is 5d1 so general electronic configuration of f block element starts from 5d1 4f1 5d1 4f1 so this is about a general electronic configuration next here 8th a group elements 8th a group elements are having a octet configuration that is ns2 np6 ns2 NP6 except helium. Except helium. Only it is allowed maximum S block element. Right? S block only. Then P block starts from lithium. Okay. So next, sorry, not lithium, beryllium, boron from boron. Here it is. P block starts. Helium, it highs configuration 1s2 maximum. Right? Then here helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, and uh, organism. These are called lice. Eighth A group elements or zero group elements or 18th group elements or inert gases are also called lice noble gases. See, many names I am given. Right? Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, and organism. These elements are called like zero group elements or 8A group elements or 18th group elements or noble gases or inert gases. Nearly five names I say. Remember all these names. Right? The next here, 7th A group elements. These 7th A group elements are called like here halogen family. Right? They are called as halogen family. So these are the important points you need to remember in outline, right? Take outline of the periodic table like this and remember. If you want a screenshot, just uh, have a screenshot. Fast. This provide you much information in the outline. Take a screenshot. Is it completed? Completed? Right. So now we are moving for another topic that is here about uh, simply what we observed in the modern periodic table. How many horizontal rows are observed? Number of horizontal rows in modern periodic table. If you want to see, I'll go back. Right. So look at them. Number of horizontal rows. Outline is given. Number of horizontal rows. Don't see the bottom. They are separated from these only. Right? How many are there? Number of horizontal rows. Answer me. Give me a number. Don't look at these because they are separated from these only, right? To avoid long formation. So number of horizontal rows are seven. Number of horizontal rows are seven, right? Then here, number of uh, vertical columns, number of vertical columns, how many are there? 18. So 
you can say about a number of horizontal rows and number of vertical columns is followed here the number of horizontal rows are 7 and number of vertical columns are 18 so modern periodic table is divided into 18 vertical columns and uh, seven horizontal rows here in modern periodic table vertical columns are called as groups vertical columns are called as groups and horizontal rows are called as periods so seven periods and uh, 18 vertical columns so sometimes in your examination they may ask you number of periods and number of groups so at the time number of periods to number of uh, groups periods to groups what we can write 7 and 18 right sometimes they may ask you number of groups and number of periods what we can write the count here 18 and 7 so to avoid your confusion just remember simply as many subjects are there in your uh, sub 10th class how many subjects are there including languages seven so seven uh, subjects seven periods seven subjects seven periods like that you can remember so don't get confusion by remembering both just seven periods for seven subjects right no repeated one seven periods for seven subjects so easily you can avoid your confusion right seven periods seven subjects so this is the main important thing we need to remember from modern periodic table the next about here identifying the blocks right what are the blocks here s block p block d block and f block so how to identify for that here i am using a different elements right so i am noticing that in the table serial number or that atomic number element the next here principal quantum number n i am taking as 1 2 3 4 5 6 like this right the next here for the possible n value what is possible l value nlx method i am following right so l azimuthal or angular momentum or orbital quantum number three names right azimuthal or angular or orbital quantum number then here l possibilities if n equal to 1 l takes only the max and minimum value is zero if n equal to 2 it takes two values they are here n equal to l equal to 0 and 1 next 3 it takes 0 1 2 4 it takes 0 1 2 3 it is 5 0 1 2 3 no change in that 6 0 1 2 3 no change so 0 so maybe they are enough for me right here now i'm going for the first element is 11 atomic number 11 so what are the subshells here possible by using nlx method here nlx so i'm not going for the x only nl so n is n is 1 l is equal to 0 that is indicating you yes orbital right 1s i can write if n equal to 2 i have two possibilities L equal to 0 means S orbital. L equal to 1 means P orbital. Right? So, like that, I am writing here simply subshells. It is 1S, next 2S, next 2P, 3S, 3P, 3D, next 4S, 4P, 4D, and 4F. Next 5S, 5P, 5D, next 5F, next 6X. Right? So, like this. I am written subshells. Next here having the atomic number 11. So atomic number 11 atom is sodium. So sodium electronic configuration is 1s2. So 2 written in 1s. Next 2s2. Next 2p6. Then the final electron enters into 3s. So likewise here write the electronic configuration for the 13th element that is aluminium. So it is 13, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 6, 3s2, 3p, 1. Next here, another element uh, I am selecting here in a D block, right? So that is here, scandium. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. Next, 4s1, sorry, 
sorry, 4 is to 3D1. 4 is to 3D1. Next here, it is cerium, 58th element. It is 1 is to 2 is to 2P6, 3 is to 3P6, 3D10, 4 is to 4P6, 4D, 4D, 10, 4F is filled with only one. Next, 5S2, 5P6, 5D1, 6S2. So, this is electronic configuration of a cerium. Look at here, you got 1, 1 in 5D and 4F. So, final electronic configuration of a cerium we are writing using a blocks 5D1 and 4F1. So, which is outermost here orbital? Which is outermost orbital? 5D or 4F? 5D or 4F? Can anybody using uh, N plus L values? So, N plus L we are using for 5D. I is followed here. N equal to 5. D means 0, 1, 2, 3. S, P, D. So, D takes only 2. So, it is giving you 7. Next, 4F. For 4F, I am finding towards right side here. 4 plus S, P, D, F. S, P, D, F. 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? So, F is maximum taking 3. So, 7. Right? So, likewise here, we are calculating. So, energy values are same. So, first, uh, it goes into 4F. Right? 4F. So, after filling one electron into 4F, then again, it is filling into 5D. Right? So, that is the reason to say this uh, cerium is 4F element. Right? 4F block. So, now, here, just look at the differentiating electron where it is located in sodium. So, last electron in 3s. Last electron in 3s. So, that's why sodium is said to be S block element. Sodium is said to be S block element. Then, aluminum differentiating electron in P block, 3P. Next is cellul uh, sorry, scandium, cellulium written. It is SC, scandium. Scandium is having that element in uh, 3D. Next, cerium in 4F. So, that is the reason to say sodium is S block element, aluminum is P block element, scandium is D block element and cerium is F, F block element. So, how I selected that block based on the differentiating electron, last electron, where entered. So, that is entered into 3S called uh, S block element. It is 3P called P block elements. It is 3D D block element, it is 4F, F block element. So, like this, we are identifying. Is it clear, everyone, how I identified that block of the element to which block it is belong to? Is it clear? Go to quick reaction. If not, I will explain. Right. So, now we are going for another here. It is about simply groups here which are said to be groups here which are said to be groups groups are here vertical columns right so vertical columns are called here groups so first group from hydrogen to friendship second group it is from beryllium to radon next sorry beryllium to radium right Third group is scandium to not fixed here. It is actually lutetium, LU. Right? So these lanthanides and actinides are belongs to third group only. Don't get confusion. Right? The next fourth group. Fourth group is from titanium to rutherfordonium. Next fifth group from vanadium to uh, dubinium. Next from Chromium 2, it is seaborgium. Uh, Next, seventh group is from manganese to borium. Next, eighth group, it is from iron to uh, hasium. 
next ninth group it is from cobalt to uh, meltanium meltarium next it is from nickel to dysprosium next 11th group 12th group here sorry animation reversed 11th group is from copper to uh, rantagenium next zinc is from sorry 12th group is from zinc to copernium copernicium next from 13th group boron to nihonium 14th group is from carbon to fluorovium just in your uh, textbooks these elements 113 114 they are not maybe given here just note down there here one one third element is nihonium nh next one one fourth element is fluorovium fl next 15th group element start from nitrogen and uh, last one is moscovium mc 16th group elements halogen group elements from oxygen to livermorium lv 17th group elements from fluorine to uh, tenesian so these are the elements then last group elements 18th it is from helium to organisan or anybody asking something Rohit, are you? Or Tejashwini? Tejashwini, maybe. Right. So, these are the groups. So, now, we have something discussion about groups only here. Groups are simply here represented in your table with vertical columns that which are ending with the similar electronic configuration. The elements which similar outer shell electronic configuration in their atoms or in same column called groups. So what are groups? As we uh, observed previously, hydrogen to francium, right? So actually hydrogen belongs to first group, but not 1A group, right? It belongs to first group, but not 1A group. 1A group is alkali metals, right? Modern system, one group, okay, without A and B. So here, similar electronic configuration is there in their outermost shell, right? So NS1, NS2, NS2, NP1, NS2, NP2, like that. So elements which are belongs to the same group possess similar electronic configuration. For example, here, if you take sodium, what is its electronic configuration? 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S1. Next up, uh, sodium potassium sorry argon to potassium next it is 4s1 so look at there here generally what we can write ns1 electronic configuration that is only here similar electronic configuration right so they possess similar electronic configuration next here in this only we are observing a representation of our groups so representation of groups in two ways it happens it happens in Two ways. So what they are here, one is in modern system and the other is in traditional system. In traditional system, we are following Roman numerals using subgroups A and B, right? In modern system, we are following Arabic numerals, Arabic numerals without following A and B subgroup, without subgroup. So here, Indian system is following the both. Right, following modern system and following the traditional system. So, modern system we are using Arabic numerals, and uh, that is followed by simply Arabic, sorry, Roman numerals in the parenthesis in the bracket. So, as you see here, for example, here group number two is represented as here group two with 2a Roman numeral. Right, so like this, we are following both for group 16. 68s traditional system right so this is about uh, groups are you clear about groups are you able to read that groups in a modern periodic table just looking them these are the information you need to study in the periodic table right so this is about uh, groups right 
So what is the time? Okay, we have 20 minutes. Join again. Join immediately.